Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, we are continuing to do some CNC work with the Snapmaker. In this episode, we are continuing to find ways of cutting out the profile and licking it to the overall shape. This is part two of the series and so far we have learned the relationship between the path and the cutting bit and how to create topography manually. To get more details, I will link the video right here. In this video, we are looking at a functionality in Inkscape called Interpolate. The easiest way to explain the interpolate functionality is this. You have two paths and based on user input, the interpolate functionality creates a series of intermediate paths that morph path 1 into path 2. The morphing begins at the beginning node of path 1, represented by my thumb, and ends at the beginning node of path 2, represented by the other thumb. So depending on how they're oriented, you will get different results. And let's take a look at the example to find out. We have two shapes, a black star and a white pentagon, that I have already converted to paths. The easiest way to find the beginning node is select the node tool, and then click on the desired shape, and press on the tab once. The node that gets highlighted is the beginning node. So we see the beginning node here, and we do the same for the pentagon. We see the beginning node right here. So let's do some interpolation. We select both paths, go to extension, generate from path, interpolate. I will talk about the different settings later on. All we care about right now is the interpolation steps, which are basically the different number of paths, those intermediary paths that I just mentioned. And for the sake of this example, I'm going to select three. Once we click on apply, we get this. We can see how the star gradually moves towards the pentagon. Now let's uh, remove that and rotate the pentagon 90 degrees. And let's perform the exact same operation. Then we can see how the stars are somewhat differently shaped. And let's do another rotation of the pentagon and see what happens. There, a completely different third set of results. The most important feature of the interpolate functionality is this, the interpolate style checkbox. And once we check it on and we click on apply, we see this. And let's take a look at each object individually. And we'll focus primarily on the color. And what do we see here? A grayscale. If we click on that one, another grayscale. And when we click on the third, even the third grayscale. So basically, not only the paths are morphed, the color is also changed. So how does this relate to what we are looking at? And let's go back to our original example of the salad server. Let me explain the setup pretty quickly. We have the white line, which represents the outermost boundary beyond which we cannot cut. We have the gray shape, which represents the outermost path, so that the flat end mill does not cut beyond the white line. And for this example, I made it slightly gray. And we have the black shape, which represents the innermost path. Coincidentally, it is located at the lowest point based on our desired profile shape, and somewhat centered based on the height or width, depending on how you're looking at it. Now, let's select the small shape, the big shape, and let's do some interpolation. So, extensions, generate from path, interpolate. And I'm going to keep the same number, uh, same steps uh, as before. So we see something created, but we have no idea what it created. So if that's the case, all you can do is play around with the checkbox called use Z order. And in that case, it just rearranges all the things that it created. But now we see that we are missing our lowest point. So how do we do that? Well, the easiest way is to check the box called duplicate end paths. And once we click on apply, it means that in the grouping that came out, we have the beginning and the end path. 
and the other ones are sitting behind the scenes because they are being duplicated. We have now a way to create topography more automatically, but is it going to serve our purpose? <laughs> Let's find out. For the purposes of this example, I am going to use 11 paths or 11 interpolation steps and that will give me a total number of 13 paths. So one path beginning, one path end, plus the 11 in between. So when we click on apply, we get this nice and even spaced. And now it's also time to look at the exponent. And let's put a positive one as the exponent. And then we see how further apart the paths are at the bottom and kind of congregated at the outer edges. On the other hand, if you do exactly the same, select the path, but in this case use a negative index or negative exponent, we can see that they're closely concentrated towards the center or towards the, uh, the first path, the small path, and further apart at the outer edges. For the purposes of this example, I am going to keep it at zero for even spacing. Now, I haven't found a difference between interpolation method 2 and interpolation method 1. So if you're not getting any results that you like, try selecting between the two and see if that makes a difference. Now we click apply and this is what we get. And now the big question is, does it fit our profile, our desired profile that we see up here? The only way to find out is to actually place the, the paths and calculate the depth of cut and then place the two and see how it is going to cut. It's kind of like the reverse of what we did in the previous video where we saw where the two should be and then we created the topography. Now we have the topography, but where is that topography going to land us? And the way to do it is quite simple. I'm only going to show one or two examples and everything else will be on fast forward. Now let's get to it. Locating the paths is quite simple. All you have to do is drag the guides to the edge of your path. And now we have to figure out how deep each path is going to cut. And for that, I have created a spreadsheet where I can plug in the grayscale value and it will give me the appropriate depth of the uh, of the guide. So this is a zero. So we have it here, the lowest point right here. Uh, and then we can go with this path, which is grayscale 20. And this path, which is grayscale 41. So that gives us the position of the guides at uh, these locations right here. And they're all relative to the top of the wood guide that we see right here, which is at 20.066 uh, millimeters from the edge of the document. So the easiest way to do it is drag a horizontal line, double click and modify the Y value. And we do that the same for the paths that we created. And finally, once I have that, I will place the two where the guide mark is. And that's going to give me all the depths of cut and we'll see how it all looks. So this is what we have. Um, we do see that we are going to the bottom where we want it, uh, but we are also seeing that it's more of a linear cut as opposed to a curved cut. And there is plenty of wood between our desired profile and the depth of cut of the paths. Now I have gone ahead with two variations and let's check them out quickly. 
The first variation is the same 11 paths, but this time I used a positive exponent of 0.5. So we can definitely see that there is a bigger distance at the bottom here and more congregation at the top there. And after placing the two, these are the paths that we see. And again, it is a more of a straighter cut as opposed to a curved cut and there is plenty of wood that is left to be cut out. The second example involves 25 paths and again we see straighter cut as opposed to a curved cut and there is plenty of wood on either end. And at this point you can begin adjusting the paths so that the edge of the two cuts along the profile line at each depth of cut. But at this point it becomes more of the manual method that we saw in the previous episode. Let's take the three shapes that we saw, run them through the CNC and see the result. Uh, we can definitely see, once again, a one-to-one -one representation between the graphic and the CNC, including the one in the middle where we had a 0.5 positive exponent. We can see that the uh, paths are wider at the bottom and we can definitely see that here compared to our initial path up there we see the smoother surface on the uh, 25 path scenario right here. And let's take some measurements. Uh, I will pick the bottom graphic and I'll try to select the very first layer. If I can, there we are. We see that it's 46.763 millimeters in width, adding the diameter of the two gets us to roughly 49.9. And let's see where we are. Now I do see a line right here. I mean, I do need to tilt my head uh, several ways, but I do see a line right here and I do see a line right there, which is 49.7 ish. And that's very good, very minor distortion. And let's do a side-by-side -side comparison between the manual method represented by the left three and the interpolate method represented by the right three. We can definitely see that under the manual method we do have a much wider midsection compared to the interpolate method. We also see the resemblance of a curve in all the manual methods compared to the straight lines of the interpolate method. And under both cases we see that with increased number of paths the less pronounced the step pattern becomes. And this concludes the interpolation method of creating topography. In the next video we'll look at another functionality in Inkscape. If you like this video make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also, follow me on all social media channels and consider supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down in the description.